this is the essence of what an intellect does. It holds you back from that which will cause you harm and guides you to your destination and journey. Just like the harness, just like what holds back the horse. Aql prevents a person from destruction in this world and the hereafter. Look at the beauty of the Arabic language. Wallahi, there is no language that is as eloquent as the Arabic language. And one of the best ways we can appreciate and realize that is to go to the roots of the words of the, of the words in, in the Arabic language. The same word for intellect actually has nothing to do with the dimagh and the intellect. It has to do with holding back and restraining. And so the aql prevents one from falling into disaster, falling into shame, falling into problems in this world and the hereafter. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described those who reject the sunnah. And though, when I say the sunnah, I mean the prophetic way overall. Those who reject the message of the sunnah, He has described them as being without aql. In some verses, He describes them as fools. He describes sinners as fools. Because the two in Islam have the same connotation and, 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 and concept. Only a fool would disobey Allah. That's the, that's the point here. And only an intelligent person obeys Allah. Only a fool would disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reject the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says in Surah Al-Ankabut, verse 63, قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Say all praises due to Allah. بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Most of those who reject the message, they don't think. They're fools. They're foolish people for not pondering and thinking about the message of Islam. In Surah Al-Mulk, verse 10, Surah Al-Mulk, verse 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the people of the fire of hell are going to say, وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُ مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السعير. They would say, if we only heard and thought, we would not be of the denizens of the fire of hell. We wouldn't be people of the fire of hell if we only thought. If we only used our intellect. Subhanallah, being wise saves you from the fire of hell. Using your aql leads you to accepting the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, before we conclude uh, and open up the floor for questions, what are some of the dangers of, of, of giving precedence to what we perceive to be aql over the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Well, first and foremost, can such an instance occur? Can there be a direct and explicit contradiction between aql on the one hand, or call it, you know, um, nature, call it science, call it technology? Can there be a contradiction between science and common sense on the one hand and our sharia and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ on the other? We as Muslims, as Orthodox Muslims, there are other groups out there who believe otherwise. But as Orthodox Muslims, we believe firmly that it is not possible for there to be a direct clash, a direct conflict between common sense and science and and what? the sunnah and the sharia of Islam. There can be no contradiction between a scientific reality, between common sense and logic and Islam. There cannot be. Why? Simple. Both come from Allah. Both come from Allah. And to claim a contradiction implies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'udhu billah, did something wrong. He gave us an aql, He sent down a sharia. We say there's a clash. Who's the one who made a mistake? A'udhu billah. The claim therefore is that the mistake comes from the one who either sent the sharia I don't, or created the aql. And so we as Muslims believe that such a case can never occur. Never can a scientific fact contradict a verse of the Quran. Darwin's theory for example can never be proven. It will always remain a theory. It is a theory. It has its evidences. It will never be a fact. Never. Because the Quran tells us something else. I'm not even going to say, if they prove it, they will never be able to prove it. Never give us a solid proof. They have proven the earth is round. This is a scientific proof. Nobody can deny it. They have proven that the sun, uh, that, the, the, that, the, the, that the earth orbits the sun. This is scientific proof. Nobody can deny it. 
We don't find verses that go against it. In the past, some people might have interpreted some verses to mean the earth is flat or this or that. This is an interpretation. You look at the Quran and you find there is no interpretation, there is no contradiction between anything that has scientifically been proven or logically or rationally proven and the Quran. And this will never occur. Never. This is a fundamental belief that we should have as Muslims. However, suppose we do find in our own daily lives this, this contradiction. We do find something that, you know, we think, well, that doesn't make sense. How can that be true? In this case, we have to understand that our aql, our intellect, does not have a precise limit or criterion of what is right and wrong. Our intellect is a faculty that Allah has given us, just like hearing and seeing and smelling and taste, other faculties. And a faculty is not divine. It can be mistaken. If I put a pen in water, you all know you're going to see the pen crooked. You're seeing it. You're seeing it crooked. You know that it's not crooked. You see a mirage in the desert. You see that water. You know it's not true. You hear somebody and you think it's somebody. You turn around, you find it's another person. You thought something, you heard something, but it turns out to be incorrect. Now you see when it comes to hearing and seeing and taste, we have other parameters. We have other people to correct us. Who's going to correct us if my intellect makes a mistake? If I say, my intellect tells me this is logically true, and you say, no, hold on a sec, my intellect tells me this is logically true. Well, where's the judge? Who's the criterion? When it comes to vision, when it comes to other things, there are plenty of ways we can find out. When it comes to intellect, it doesn't have a precise role. So instead of saying that, well, my aql tells me that this verse or this hadith cannot be true, we should rather say, hold on a sec, what gives your aql the right to give that claim in the first place? Our aql doesn't have a precise limit, nor does it have a judge or a criterion. One of the best ways to, to show this, really and truly, is to look at the philosophers. The philosophers claim that aql alone leads us to the truth. We only need our intellect. And yet, from the beginning of time until our times, no two philosophers have ever agreed about the basic premises of life, of why we are here, of the body and soul, of religion. No two philosophers. And they all claim to come from the aql. It is sufficient to show that the aql alone can never lead us to the ultimate truth to see those who claim that it can. The contradictions that they have between each other, amongst each other, is sufficient to show that this can never occur. Likewise, on the supposition that such a contradiction could occur. How many minutes do I have? Okay. I was hoping for a 10 minute, 5 minutes so that I can finish up, but okay, 5 minutes, okay. Um, on, such a, uh, on the supposition that such a contradiction could occur, we should actually accuse our intellect before accusing the Qur'an and Sunnah. Perhaps we didn't understand what the verse or the hadith is telling us. Let me give you a realistic example. One of the famous, you know, um, you know, things that is being denied in our times, the famous hadith in Bukhari and Muslim Muttafaq Ali, where Allah, where the Prophet ﷺ says that every time the sun sets, what happens? What happens every time the sun sets? According to the hadith, who can tell me? Come on, I know, I know, you've heard this hadith before. People reject it. It goes to. It goes to where? The throne of Allah. And it prostrates in front of the throne of Allah. And it asks permission to come from the next day. To rise from the east. And every day it will be given that permission until the day of judgment. When Allah will say, "Come, go back to where you came from. And so it shall rise, rise from the west. This hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. It is with the most you know, blatantly correct chain of Isnad we can possibly have. To deny this hadith means you're denying our salah and siyam and zakah and everything because they come with the same chains as this hadith does. Now, very common now is like, oh come on, this hadith cannot be true. We know for a fact that the sun does not orbit the earth. But rather the earth orbits the sun. And we know that night and day is just the earth coming and turning around in its axis. And so we think that the sun is rising and coming down in this and that. 
And so it's not possible that the sun goes anywhere and prostrates and comes back and then asks permission to, to, to rise from the other way. And so this hadith cannot be authentic. Modern science has proven that this hadith is fabricated and false. Now, instead of jumping to this conclusion, a conclusion which has very evil repercussions, of them, by the way, as I said, is the salah and siyam and zakah. The same people who told you that we have to pray five times a day told you this hadith. Look up the chain, see what else is narrated. If you say this hadith is not authentic, why are you praying five times a day? The Quran doesn't tell you to pray five times a day. And in fact, the reality is our Quran comes down through the change of narrators. How do we know the Prophet ﷺ said, Alif Lamim, Dhalik Al-Kitab, La Rabbi Were we there? Do we hear him? We have a book in front of us. The tashkil can vary. We have no Quran that the Prophet ﷺ himself wrote. We have to be very careful. The repercussions, the ramifications of opening up this tour really and truly are the destruction of our religion of Islam. Nothing is left. Okay? Getting back to the point, how do we understand this hadith?